Hmm, interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sit back, relax, and enjoy. It's showtime! Who's going to have the guts to stand up on a stage and say that reptiles run the world? I mean, who's going to do it? No one's ever going to do it. Had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that much. You know what your radio station is? Thanks for coming. It's pathetic. They are true, Bill, OK. <laughs> They're in my books. There's old there's documentaries about it. They're true. Go away. Drink your milk. David Icke was born on the 29th of April 1952 in Leicester, England. The middle son of three boys who was raised in the poor side of town and wrote the following quote about his childhood. To say we were skint is like saying it's a little chilly in the North Pole. As a youngster, Ike didn't do very well academically at school, but did have a gift for football, or soccer, if you're American. He saw this as a way to escape the poverty that he was born into and was soon spotted by a Coventry City talent scout. David was a very promising goalkeeper and had a bright future ahead of him until fate dealt him a f**k you card and he had to retire at 21 due to rheumatoid arthritis a condition that has plagued him his whole life. Ike's relationship to his father began to fray due to his father's disappointment over his football career, so David moved out of the family home and quickly married his first wife who was pregnant with their first child. His dreams of football stardom had turned into a nightmare and with a family to feed, David took a job at a local newspaper and worked his way up the ladder until he hit the big time in 1981 as a sports presenter for the BBC's Newsnight. This was a national TV programme and at a time that Britain only had three TV stations, so he was soon a household name and by all accounts was a popular personality. This period was the most normal of David's life, a rich and famous TV presenter with the world at his feet, a loving family and the sweetheart of a nation. What could go wrong? Well, if you follow this channel, you should know by now that we'd like to start off normal before we descend into the more odd parts of the human condition. So it's a safe bet that something went wrong. Ike's contract with the BBC was terminated in 1990 when he refused to pay the new tax that had been introduced that year. The poll tax, as it was called, was very poorly received by the British public and sparked riots all over the country. The feeling against the poll tax was so strong that it was scrapped in 1993 and replaced by the council tax, which we still pay today and is a big waste of everyone's money. This seemed to be a turning point for Ike, and now his more eccentric side was unleashed upon the world. David had at this point been well acquainted with alternative medicine and new age philosophies having used them to try and help with his arthritis. Now that he had more free time on his hands he began to dip his toes into this world a little more and before long he was knee deep in psychic healing and green politics. In the early 90s he became a national spokesman for the Green Party who are an environmental left-wing fringe political party based in the UK and he had released a book called It Doesn't Have to Be Like This which outlines his views on the environment. Ike claims that around this time he had a feeling that a presence had been around him for a while, following him, unseen but unmistakably there. This began to drive David mad so one night when alone in a hotel room he asked, is anybody there? Then in a great puff of smoke, the devil appeared and fucked him up the arse. <laughs> Maybe the devil part wasn't true. He got no reply to his question in the hotel room. But a few days later, while out shopping, he felt a force pulling at him and heard a voice speaking to him. The unseen apparition guided him to a book, Mind to Mind by Betty Shine. Mrs. Shine was a psychic healer and David would visit her in an attempt to heal his arthritis. On one of these visits, Betty told David that she had a spirit world message from Wang Yi Li. I'm assuming this is referring to Wang Yi, who is a southern Taiwanese folklore figure best known for expelling disease and evil. Or at least that's what the internet tells me. Wang Yi Li told them that Ike had been sent to heal the earth. This would be a difficult task with much opposition, but he would ultimately become famous. She also said that spirits would pass him ideas which he would speak about with others. He would write five books in three years, a new flying machine would be invented to allow us to go anywhere, and that time would have no meaning. In 1991, Ike visited a burial ground in Peru and had his chakras fiddled with by some spirits, which opened him up to a higher level of consciousness. 
This higher level of consciousness, for some reason, only wanted to wear the colour turquoise. So this part of his life is known as the turquoise period. In this time period, he would channel spirits and do automatic writing. These spirits would tell him that he is the son of God, a claim that would later come back to haunt him. It's funny how often a revelation that you are the son of God or a chosen prophet is followed by the need to have more than one sexual partner. And Ike, the dirty little dog, is no exception to this rule. He started what is known as the turquoise triangle with him, his wife and an English psychic called Deborah Shaw. The turquoise triangle must have been a fun time for Ike as it led to the birth of a daughter by Shaw and a son by his wife. So if you keep in count, that's three children in total. Ike has only seen his daughter once but has a good relationship with his sons. In March 1991, Ike resigned from the Green Party during a party conference telling them that he was about to be at the centre of a tremendous and increasing controversy. Whatever you think about Ike's psychic abilities, he was undoubtedly right about this one, as we will see in the next chapter. You know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that much. A week after he resigned from the Green Party, the Turquoise Triangle held a press conference in which they announced that he was the son of the Godhead. He also proclaimed the spirits had told him the world would end in 1997 and that this Armageddon would be preceded by natural disasters all over the world. This press conference gained some media attention and soon Ike was booked to appear on one of the biggest talk shows in Britain at the time. The host, Terry Wogan, introduced the segment as The World As We Know It Is About To End. Ike appeared in his now infamous turquoise shell suit with claims that he was the son of God and that Britain would soon be underwater. The studio audience were openly mocking him and laughing at the claims that he was making, to which Ike said that laughter was the best way to remove negativity. Terry Wogan then replied with his famous line, They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Fine. This appearance turned Ike from an oddball to an outright nutcase in the eyes of the British public and he was relentlessly mocked for years after this. He would have hundreds of people outside his house chanting, we want the Messiah and give us a sign, David. People would laugh and point at him everywhere he went. The press would follow him everywhere to see what insane antics he was up to and his name was synonymous with being crazy. He was the laughing stock of a nation. His fall from grace was now complete and he had gone from a well-respected TV presenter to a crazy kook. David was down and out and it would take years for him to recover any credibility but this didn't seem to phase Ike and he continued to publish books with titles such as Love Changes Everything, I Am Me, I Am Free and The Robot's Rebellion. These books were about how humanity is being controlled by beings from other dimensions and planets through the corrupt forces of the church, state, science and commerce. On that note let's take a more in-depth look at some of his theories. Who's going to have the guts to stand up on a stage and say that reptiles run the world? I mean, who's going to do it? No one's ever going to do it. We're never going to find out, are we? Um, so... People were coming up to me and telling me how they had seen people, overwhelmingly in positions of power, though not always, turn in front of their eyes into a reptilian humanoid figure and then go back again. And, of course, you hear one and you think, ooh... <laughs> And you hear two and you think, oh my God, back burner. You hear three, you hear four, you hear five, you hear six in different countries. Now these nodules on the head are something that come up again and again. And for some reason, drinking human blood, particularly the blood of blonde-haired, blue-eyed people, seems to be um, very beneficial to holding mammal codes open. So... David Icke is most famous for popularising the idea that the global elites are really shape-shifting interdimensional lizard-human hybrids who feed off the energy produced by human suffering. In the early days of his alternative career, he believed that an entity known as Lucifer was feeding off the negative energy in the world, but as time went by, his thinking on this has evolved into interdimensional lizards. This is not a unique idea, with the first recorded evidence I could find dating back to 1934, when the LA Times newspaper printed a story asking if lizard people lived beneath Los Angeles. The story goes that a man named George Shufelt 
was doing a mining survey when he stumbled across an underground labyrinth with rooms made of gold and tablets with the origins of the human race written on them. Sadly, George didn't see any of this stuff as it was his x-ray machine that picked up the underground lizard city and tales of local Native American tribes that informed him that lizards lived under our feet. Shufelt did try to dig up the golden city, but sadly he could never find it. So if you live in LA and have a spade and many years of free time, you could be rich one day, maybe. There is also much circumstantial evidence that our ancestors believed in some kind of lizard people, but I won't get into this as no one really knows what any of that means. Ike is credited with propelling this idea into the modern day consciousness, and if you've ever heard of lizard people, then this is in large part thanks to Ike. And it involves non-human entities, some of them people call the greys, the main ones I would say and have been saying for a long, long time take a reptilian form. They operate outside, they can come into visible light, but in terms of the reptilian uh, part of this, they can't stay here for that long. So people say, why don't they just come and take over? Because they can't, or they would. They can come for so long, but their vibrational uh, difference, incompatibility, means they have to uh, leave. They can't stay for long, although there are technological ways they can stay for longer. A basic outline of the reasoning behind this belief is that a breeding program has been taking place over hundreds of thousands of years between the reptiles and humans, with the bloodline of these hybrids taking up positions of power throughout history. These lizard people include the usual suspects such as the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds and the British royal family, but also American presidents and Egyptian pharaohs of old. This idea has become so far spread now that an official Information Act request was filed in New Zealand in 2008 to ask John Key, the then Prime Minister, whether he was a lizard. <laughs> I just love it so much for some reason. John Key denies that he is a lizard, but his office stated that they could not provide any data to disprove the idea that he was a lizard. Key is quoted to say that he even got himself checked by a doctor and a vet who confirmed that he is not a reptile, adding that he has never been in a spaceship and never been to outer space. Make your own mind up, I guess. Mark Zuckerberg has also been compared to a lizard countless times and doesn't do much to help the case that he isn't, to be honest. But it is going to bother you because you're human, and, and I was human. I am human, still. Um, but, um, but, it, but I was just referring to myself in the past. Um, not that I was not human. This one's a little hard for me to get my head around, so I may get some of the details wrong, maybe. But let's give it a go. So... The moon is hollow, but also not real, and some kind of projection from an alien mothership. The moon is used by the interdimensional space lizards to beam a fake reality into our brains, which is a dream world of suffering that the lizards feed off. Also, the rings of Saturn are artificially created by the reptiles, which is the base of operations, and the moon is just an amplifier for the signal that comes from Saturn. I think that's correct. Um, yeah, it's a pretty far out idea, but let's take a look to see if there could be any truth to his claims. Um, no, he's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Only joking, maybe. In 1969, NASA crashed a lunar module into the moon and reported that the moon rung like a bell for over an hour, which could indicate that it's hollow, maybe. Also, the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun is 400 times further away from the earth than the moon, and the distance of the sun from the earth is 108 times the diameter of the sun, and weirdly the distance from the earth to the moon is 108 times the diameter of the moon, which apparently is why we're able to have total solar eclipses and why they seem the same size in the sky, which is a pretty wild coincidence. It's not hard to see why people may think that this is a little more than a coincidence. I try not to dismiss people's ideas just because they sound crazy as what do I know or any of us know. Reality is far more complex than any of our silly little human brains could ever begin to fathom. But even I'm struggling with this theory to be honest. And it's my view, as I've said before in previous books, that what the moon is doing, in its present use anyway, is taking the Saturn broadcast and acting as an amplifier to fire it at the Earth so we get it in massively increased power and therefore effect. It's acting a bit like a, 
uh, a, uh, a dish transmitting uh, information which we're picking up and decoding into a fake reality. You lived your life in a bubble, um, literally a bubble of information, a bubble of perception, and someone's come along without any warning and popped the bloody thing. And suddenly, everything that was outside the bubble was pouring in. So my mind is absolutely awash with information, concepts, insights. What the hell's going on? That, you know, it was just a, a chaotic mass of, of, of information and thought and everything. And in that period, it lasted about three months. If you'd have asked me my name, I'd have checked. And that, it was in that period, in my turquoise shell suit, that I went on to um, the, um, the Wogan show. David Icke has many other well-known ideas on how the world works, such as the idea of problem, reaction, solution, in which he claims that the Babylonian Brotherhood, who run most of the major institutions around the world, create problems, then provide a solution, which helps them to achieve their end goal. But what is their end goal, I hear you ask? Well, a one-world government with a controlled and microchipped population who are little more than cattle being milked for their sweet, sweet fear and negative energy. A future where the lizards are free to feast at will and humans are brainless zombies trapped in a dream world of flashing lights and distractions. Some may argue that we already live in that world. Despite being relentlessly ridiculed for many years, David Icke stuck to his guns and would give talks and lectures around the country, mostly to empty rooms. As the years went by, the mockery of Icke would fade as he slipped from the public eye, but he would still spread his message, never flinching from his mission to save the world. By the early 2000s, Icke had built a small underground following which would grow over the next few decades. By the 2010s, he was selling out tours all around the world and had gone from a fringe crackpot to a semi-mainstream crackpot. What I've heard yeah. um, you say sounds absolute lunacy to me. Yeah. I still think you're soppy as a box of you had a brain cell it would die alone in us. <laughs> Even after saying you and wouldn't be here in 20 years, you're coming here to do a show. Isn't it a little embarrassing? No, well, I mean... It must be a little bit. There's a massive backstory to that, uh, which is far too long. But to the bottom do. line is you were wrong about so, that. So, 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 and? Well, what's to say you're right about 9-11 being an inside job? All right, so, so the, all these pilots and all these... Um, all these uh, architects, they're, they're talking nonsense as well, right? They're talking nonsense. They, they've set up these organisations for nothing, right? Right? I don't. No, you <laughs> don't know. I you don't write, know. I you don't know. And that's, <laughs> you don't know, and that's the problem. Right. And you know something else? You won't even bother to know either. So what does David Icke do? He talks about the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, these global elitists, these power structures, all real, all true, all demonstrated by bills and executive orders and prime ministers and premiers and presidents. All real, meat and potatoes, something you can bite into, something that is, is, is easily demonstrable. And then you've got David Icke at the end of all this, he says, by the way, they're blood drinking lizards. You know what your radio station is? Thanks for coming in. It's pathetic. Thank you very much for coming in. And you say you believe in freedom? You couldn't spell it. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. This is, this is life in the free world, ladies and gentlemen. The rise of the internet brought new ears to Ike's ideas, and although he was still seen as an outsider to the sheeple that he was trying to save, to his followers he was akin to a prophet, a warner trying to help the world escape from impending doom. In 2008, he even ran for election to Parliament as an independent candidate. He didn't win. Of course he didn't. Would have been fucking funny if he did, though. This stage of David's life was the peak of his alternative career, the time that all of the ridicule of the past was left behind and his commitment to his beliefs were vindicated. But as is the way of life, what goes up must come down, and in 2020, Ike claimed that the spread of 5G phone masts was linked to the spread of COVID. This led to a spree of 5G masts being burnt and engineers being attacked across Britain. It's a little hard to make out the full details around this as he was 
was pretty much wiped from the mainstream internet for this. Judging by his website, it seems the claims that he is making is that COVID is nothing more than the flu and it's just an excuse for the damage that is really caused by 5G. But as I say, all of his posts have been removed, so I have no real way of seeing what the claims were he was making at the time. Ike has now been cast at the fringes of the internet, living on places like Odyssey and his own website, which judging from his past, I'm sure he's used to by now. You look what I've said in The Biggest Secret about the British royal family, how they're involved in satanic ritual, um, how, they, how they take part in human sacrifice ritual at places like Balmoral and stuff. Come on, let's have you. Do this comply! No. I am not anti-democracy. I would just like some. People get offended about what people say about their race, their religion, their politics, their gender, their culture. All these labels, these labels that we give ourselves that are not actually who we are, they're what we're experiencing. And yet, these labels are used to create offence and also the classic divide and rule. I used to unironically watch David Icke's lectures many years ago and found them to be pretty interesting. Not because I particularly believe what he says, but he has an interesting perspective on the world. I've covered the more outlandish ideas that he has in this video, but a lot of his lectures are more like psychedelic trips wrapped up in pseudo-scientific language more than a prophet of doom type thing. I think that David Icke truly believes the stuff that he says, whereas some other people in the same line of work come off as stoking fear to sell viewers products which is pretty much the same as most advertising on TV, to be honest. I'm an open-minded guy, and in much the same way that I own copies of the Bible or the Quran, I don't believe what is written in those books, but still trying to find wisdom in the pages. So what wisdom does David Icke bring? Well, if you look at his ideas metaphorically, our leaders are mostly psychopaths or sociopaths who get rich from selling our futures to the highest bidders. It's not a great leap to see how the reptilian part of the brain could be responsible for this and how making money could be them feeding off of our suffering. Bear in mind though that this is me reading things into Ike's ideas that he himself denies and he states multiple times that he does not speak in metaphors but instead that everything that he says is literally true. So no wisdom I guess. On a totally different note, David Ike's hands have long been an obsession of mine. I know he has arthritis which is horrible but those flappy flippers seem to be casting spells. Look at them. It's like they move independently from the rest of his body. <laughs> I had no idea that David Icke was a psychic before doing the research of this video. He doesn't seem to be very good at it though, to be honest. During the Terry Wogan interview, he claimed that Saddam Hussein had been killed in the first Gulf War and that the world would end soon, both of which are not correct. And pretty much every prediction he has ever made has not come true. Ike claims that he has been warning the world since the 90s that a TV presenter called Jimmy Savile was a pedo. But again, this seems to be wrong with very little evidence being found that he actually predicted this. And it more seems that he jumped onto the bandwagon once Jimmy Savile was exposed as a pedo. On the topic of pedos, not a sentence that you say that much in life I suppose. It seems that Ike has moved away from the lizard people idea and now has replaced it with the elites being part of a satanic pedo sex cult. It's hard to say for sure that he's given up on the lizard people idea as since he's been wiped from social media it's hard to exactly pinpoint what his ideas are now. I don't like censorship and I think it's a shame that David Icke has been removed from most of the internet as I am unable to find the long form lectures that I once enjoyed. I think that we can all agree that the idea that the moon is an amplifier for Saturn beaming reality into our minds so that lizard men can feed from our sadness is pretty far out. But for every thousand far out ideas that are crazy, there's always one that turns out to be true. The people that push the boundaries are the people that push us all forward and I think it's a losing game for everyone if we censor these people. David Icke is now 70 years old and still pushing his message to anyone that will listen. His son Gareth seems to be stepping into his father's shoes and looks set to take over the battle against the lizard people when his father is no longer with us. It's been interesting researching this video and seeing how the world has shifted around David Icke. His views have changed a little, but ultimately his view has been that a high up shadowy figure is feeding from our misery. Back in the 90s when Britain was more right wing, he was painted as a loony lefty hippie type of figure. But as cultural attitudes have shifted and now Britain is more left wing, he is painted as some kind of far right extremist. The truth is that David is not left or right wing, he's up and down, the lower against the upper. And anyone making claims that he is far left or far right is just showing their own ideological capture. 
He is one of the only public figures that unites the far left and the far right, having a range of followers from the New Age psychic sea children to the anti-Semitic neo-Nazis and everything in between. Ike seems to want to unite people rather than divide them, which seems like a good thing to me. So good luck to him, the crazy old c**t. Across the millennium years is crunch time in this whole agenda, crunch time for the human race. This is the time when this network of interbreeding bloodlines wants to bring in its global fascist structure of a world government to which nation states would be administrative units um, of a world central bank and a world currency a, a currency that wouldn't be cash it would be merely electronic for which there are fundamental implications for human freedom and also the world army which is designed to be nato um, expanding and expanding as it is now of course to become the fully fledged world army world police force and underpinning that little lot is designed to be a microchip population in which we are microchip with our financial details our medical details etc etc um, and that would allow not only electronic tagging people knowing where we are all the time it would allow the external manipulation through this electronic means of our mental and emotional processes this will happen unless the human race wakes up and wakes up fast and to do that we need to understand what's really going on and to let people know that we've got to stop beating about the bush stop pulling punches stop pussyfooting around keeping information from people oh my goodness how will they react and just say this is going on take it or leave it make of it what you will but this is what's going on thanks for watching watch this video if you want to and bye bye just look at me this is not a jewish plot